Um, but what I just wanted to do really today was to um, kind of have a quick kind of recap and full stop of, of some of the key things that we've we've talked about over the previous few weeks um, to, to get you guys thinking about some of the key kind of actions and steps that we are you know recommending all the time that we you know, our clients take day to day thinking about their digital marketing strategy but also um, you know especially now when you know businesses have perhaps got a little bit more time and you know a real pressing need to think about how they're they're retooling their activities Activity and, and moving into a more digital sphere then um, yeah some recommendations that we're, we're kind of making with people there and then um, we've also got uh, I can't remember six or seven off the top of my head but six kind of key uh, predictions that we think are going to be uh, increasingly important through the rest of this year um, and moving forward in reality but primarily through the, the rest of kind of 2020 um, and, and kind of half a dozen key predictions in terms of considerations that we think is you know really important for you guys as business owners as marketeers to be kind of considering and mindful of as you start to you know actually go through the steps that we've kind of prescribed and suggested over the last few weeks and start to kind of put your kind of plans and activities and stuff together um, obviously last week we had um, a, a slightly more detailed look at uh, you know kind of digital marketing in the time of COVID-19 and we looked at some kind of specific strategies and opportunities that we have you know noticed in our own kind of work day to day we work with clients across a whole range of different sectors and, and you know there are different patterns and trends emerging in some of those but there were also you know some universal uh, truths I guess that we've come across as well so hopefully that was useful and gave you kind of something to think about as well obviously we've had a chat about what we're going to cover um, in today's session as well so you know ultimately uh, the, the main thing that we have you know started out from the, the main kind of first slide I think in week one was kind of setting out this this playing field that digital marketing is you know essentially an ever evolving feast um, this is something that is uh, has has become a, an increasingly important part of, of businesses' um, brand experience over the last kind of ten years, uh, and something that is continuing to, to kind of develop and grow in importance all the time. So that was kind of the premise of, of kind of where we started, and trying to equip you guys over the last kind of eight weeks with you know the relevant kind of skills and tools to be able to make the most of that playing field. Um, obviously, we talked right at the beginning about how over the, the you know the, the intervening you know, 10, 15 years as, as the internet has become more of an intrinsic part of our, our kind of daily lives and our daily interactions with brands and businesses that that traditional relationship that we'd had um, where it was very much kind of a one-way street of businesses pushing out their, their marketing and their advertising and consumers acting on that 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 has actually become over you know time a much more mutual two-way relationship and that actually there is you know some kind of value being exchanged both ways between both the businesses that are you know pushing content and information out into the world and the, the consumers that are actively engaging acting upon and sharing that content so hopefully that's another kind of key thing that you guys have kind of taken away from this that ultimately you know marketing is, is much less of a one-way uh, street these days and far more of a kind of a two-way um, communicate a two-way conversation at each step as well um, and I, I know I've re referred to this graphic kind of a couple of times in previous slides but certainly for, for Victoria it might be one that is um, uh, kind of useful in terms of visualizing this journey that we're talking about here um, and you know things like social media uh, advertising email marketing newsletters content marketing these are now becoming rather rather than just being you know the one thing that businesses do to advertise themselves what we're finding is that you know increasingly the businesses that are seeing the most amount of benefit from their digital marketing are the guys that actually you know think about the digital marketing activity that they're carrying out at every step of, of that life cycle and that journey that they go through from first trying to attract potential visitors customers users of their site or service and actually walking those people through that kind of process of actually acting on the the calls to action that we're putting out and you know ultimately getting to where we want them to be whether that's buying a ticket turning up to somewhere buying a product online or even just you know sharing a particular piece of content out there into the world for us you know this is something that is as i say a far more hand-holding experience these days as we walk our, our users and our visitors through all of those kind of steps and goals that we want to achieve Obviously, we've talked um, again. This has been this particular slide we pulled right back from the the original kind of kickoff uh, presentation in this series. You know, as we've talked about, the, this digital marketing that we are referring to here is far more than just you know content in a tweet or a Facebook update or an email uh, newsletter going out. Now we're seeing consumers increasingly 
um, kind of wanting to and expecting to be able to to interact with and you know deal with the, uh, their favorite brands and businesses across a range of different platforms whether that be you know a, a number of different social media channels whether that be via a podcast or a series of blog posts that get syndicated out into different places you know we have got an increasingly wide playing field of, of kind of touch points where we can be uh, you know reaching our customers engaging with them and hopefully uh, you as I say, calling them to some kind of uh, meaningful action for us as, as business owners. And over the last um, kind of eight weeks, you know, I've, I've bolded and underlined, as, you know, some of the areas that we've talked about over this series. And, you know, even if we, if you guys go away and, and even if you take, you know, half of this list here and start to think about, you know, your website and, you know, the role that social media and email plays in, in you know, Develop, delivering visitors through to that, then that in itself is going to give you, you know, a, a far greater um, uh, benefit to, to the activity that you're working on. But ultimately, we, we've said to people where you've got the, you know, the opportunity to to diversify, to recycle content into different platforms, and to start making the most of all of the opportunities that are in front of us. Um, you know that actually there is significant value that can be derived from that activity across all of these different platforms. You know, and hopefully. I I think we our webinar six Victoria in particular was one where we looked at a whole range of different tools and software and bits of um, kind of functionality that you can sign up for most of those packages were, were kind of free things that you can sign up for and start making use of but all of those tools were really geared around trying to help you guys make the most of this kind of playing field really whether that be you know de developing really nice looking content like Seb had kind of talked about in terms of you know nice looking graphics or maybe bits of video content that you want to push out into your social feeds um, or even you know stuff like videos and, and, and different bits and bobs like that so hopefully uh, over the next kind of few weeks months as you guys have got the time to be able to investigate some of those tools and, and packages and stuff as well they're all bits that you can kind of integrate into this digital marketing plan and hopefully start to make the most of you know a number of new fields for you guys as well you know it's one of the things I always come up against when we're, we're talking to clients about their you know digital marketing strategy and starting to put into place yeah, emails and social media and blog posts and all this kind of stuff it can quite rapidly kind of mount up to quite an intimidating amount of work in terms of the time that it's actually going to take to you know effectively deliver and manage on all of that activity so you know we say just as important as as you know setting out what you're going to do and, and what physical activity you're planning on carrying out for the coming uh, you know weeks months in front of us just as important a part of that puzzle will be um, actually help you guys taking the time to identify and make use of um, some of those tools that actually makes delivering that work far more efficiently and means that you guys don't end up down a whole kind of marketing content rabbit hole where actually you find that it's taken over Kind of disproportionate amounts of your time especially so with that in mind hopefully like I say that that's um, you, between the, the various kind of presentations that we've put together over the last kind of eight weeks um, hopefully you can start to see how all of the kind of ideas and the strategies that we've outlined kind of interlink really to help us get to a point where we are you know in a position to begin developing and, and delivering a far more kind of cohesive digital marketing strategy for our businesses so obviously, in terms of what's next, we say to people right at the beginning of this process, um, you know, making the most of this op opportunity ultimately requires both analysis and planning to deliver, you know, what is going to be a campaign of, of hopefully very targeted activity across, you know, a range of different platforms. If, if you guys follow the advice that we have, have put down over the last few weeks, then ultimately that's exactly where you'll get to. You know, you're going to be working on a range of different platforms and hopefully using some of the tools and strategies that we've talked about to, to make sure that that work you know is as targeted and as relevant to the audience and our desired audience as we possibly can so really that step of, of actually taking the the time to analyze the work that you've done to date um, and, and to really kind of put into the, the, the planning and the execution of that campaign is going to be absolutely crucial 
Um, when it comes to developing our digital marketing strategy, um, obviously, you know, we, we've tried to stress some of these points at, at various uh, junctures during the last few weeks. But, you know, the, the main thing that we always say should be, you know, the bedrock of your, your digital marketing strategy is some kind of genuine real world intelligence of your audience and what their habits are day to day. So, you know, over the last few weeks, we've talked about various ways that you can start to try and get a feel for that, whether that be your Google Analytics data from your website will obviously be one source of information that will give you, you know, a really good snapshot of, of what uh, what activity is working and, and, you know, where you could potentially be seeing some improvements. But in addition, you know, we say to people, it's really important to try and take a really kind of holistic view of it. So rather than just look at your, your Google Analytics, you know, make sure that you're examining things like your, your Twitter and Facebook dashboards or your analytics within Instagram. Um, if you're using things like MailChimp or another email packaging uh, software to deliver email campaigns out to users, then make sure you are, you know, collating all of that data into one place to give you a really kind of hard and fast set of you know, intelligence and information about who it is that's interacting with your business and how it is that you are kind of reaching for those people in the first place. Um, next point in terms of kind of making sure we are, we're, we're kind of putting our strategy together in the right way is to obviously take some kind of real world account of, of actually what these consumers you know, behavior and habits tend to be as well, you know, um, just as important as our kind of very hard fast black and white numbers in, in Google Analytics and, and Twitter dashboards and stuff like that. Actually, there's you know, a whole range of different ways between things like quizzes, surveys, polls within things like Twitter and stuff as well, that we can get quite a, you know, a, quite a nice informal, um, almost like an acid test from people to try and get a slightly more human response to a particular question or, you know, a, a piece of information that we're trying to get to the bottom of. Um, and even, you know, the, the app mention that we talked about in our, um, in our marketing stack presentation a few weeks ago, just, you know, listening for particular keywords and finding out what kind of discussions are happening in those areas and around you know, particular accounts or particular keywords or activities will all be a, another really useful way that you can kind of put an ear on the conversation a little bit and take a bit more of a, um, I suppose, a real world view of things rather than just, um, you know, numbers and percentages and click through rates and stuff like that. But ultimately between, you know, those two kind of strands, hopefully what that gives you is, you know, a really robust idea of the kind of people that you A, want to talk to and B, are you know talking to at the moment because you know ultimately there, there is sometimes a disconnect when people actually sit and do the analysis and find out that you know actually I'm not reaching the the, the people and dealing with the people that oh, you know I thought we potentially were um, as we've hopefully tried to enforce a couple of times over the previous few weeks our digital marketing strategy will be one that ideally mirrors enhances and expands our, our kind of real world offering um, you know we've talked about the fact that uh, businesses that run very kind of friendly, approachable, you know, customer led businesses in the real world. Um, the, the, those guys tend to see far better um, engagement and, and take up on their kind of social and digital activities when that kind of tone and feel is reflected in their digital activities as well, you know. Um, vice versa, if you are, I don't know, potentially a bank or, or some kind of very formal kind of institution that, you know, people are um, maybe expecting to be a little bit more kind of formal and buttoned down in their approach in the real world, uh, you know, having a Twitter account with some guy just, you know, sharing memes all day and having a, a roar in time being some kind of Twitter stand up comedian, again, is a really kind of strange disconnect for users to deal with. So it's kind of really important that all of the work that we are doing digitally, whether that be in our website or, you know, in these external platforms, social media, stuff like that, that all of that really does kind of reflect and develop on, you know, how, how users find and interact with us in the real world as well. Um, <coughs> My apologies. We've talked about the need, obviously, to make sure that all of the campaigns and strategies we are kind of putting together ultimately remain sustainable within, you know, whatever limits and structure of the business is that you are kind of dealing with day to day. I think round the table today, broadly, we're probably um, largely the, the main person within our organisations responsible for this kind of activity. Um, and, you know, it's, it's got to be you know, pointed out that we're in 
quite a unique time at the moment you know Seb made reference to the fact that you know you've got a little bit more time at the moment to be able to kind of investigate some of these things as well and to maybe you know work in some slightly new areas but ultimately as things do go back to normal uh, or, or some kind of normality I should say obviously there are going to be increasing and changing kind of demands on our time so uh, as, as we kind of made allusion to a couple of slides back you know it's really important that while we are sitting and building this strategy and trying to work out what it is that we want to do with our digital marketing work that actually we do really take the time to identify the tools and systems that will help us to deliver that and actually put them into place and, and set all of those tools and systems up now so that actually you know all of this great work that we're doing can run to some kind of uh, self-autonomous self-delivering degree um, kind of behind the scenes so that while you are out there in the world inspecting client sites or doing you know kind of tours or something of the museum or anything like that actually all of that kind of digital work can still continue and you're not finding that actually all of that hard work that you've put into building a particular kind of presence and, and tone of voice out there in the world just completely kind of nosedives within the next kind of six months so make sure that we are putting into place hopefully plans and strategies that are going to be you know sustainable and usable for you guys long term and you know ultimately I think we, I've, I've used the word quite a lot over the, 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 the last kind of couple of months but ultimately what we're looking to try and do is deliver kind of value really at every step so both for the both for our users visiting us we need to try and offer as much value as we can as a way of trying to you know kind of reinforce our, our connection with people and, and get them engaged and involved in what we're doing but you know at the same time it's really important for us as business owners to make sure that that work that we're doing is valuable to us and is actually doing what we want it to so we need to try and keep that in mind at every step of the process as well Obviously, we talked about, I'm not going to run through all of the slides in detail again um, here, because uh, obviously that's kind of recapping almost verbatim a previous presentation. But obviously, we, we just wanted to kind of remind that, you know, we, we try and take people through a bit of a five step process when it's um, when we, we come to try and work out actually what our digital marketing strategy is going to look like over the coming months. Um, ultimately, first of all, obviously, you guys need to, to set out and work out what it is that you want to achieve, whether that be, you know, particular amount of, of new website visitors or maybe generating a certain amount in revenue through your digital marketing activities. Um, we need to understand what the steps are um, that are going to take a user from you know potentially discovering hire man in van and then you know walking all the way through the various steps of the digital sales funnel to you know ultimately get to the point where Seb then you are out on your van you know moving boxes and getting people you know moving between locations so it's really under important that we understand right at the beginning what that user journey looks like and what the steps are going to be at each you know each stage to move people on to the next um, obviously we've talked about the importance of um, of understanding who our audience is um, and, and you know ultimately how they're reaching us at the moment because you know without that information it, it's really uh, difficult for us to be able to gauge you know how effective the work we are doing is um, and ultimately what it is that we want to do over the coming weeks and months to try and reach our goals so creating those kind of buyer profiles and, and putting together um, a really clear picture in our mind um, and on the page for that matter of, of, kind of who our audience is and what they like is going to be absolutely crucial um, number four obviously once we kind of understand those kind of broad playing fields um, or, or sorry once we understand the lines of that particular playing field what we then you know suggest people do is to then look at the specific tactics um, that we're actually going to deliver to reach those goals so whether that be you know twitter based campaigns whether that be you know email based offers for, for for customers and stuff like that but you know what we're looking to do is essentially then put together specific little tactical links that put to, that kind of move all of our users along the various stages of that digital sales funnel that we put together um, and number five obviously pick it apart we've said um, kind of consistently the whole way through this as well that actually that process of testing and refining and adapting the work that we are Kind of doing on a day-to-day -day basis is again just as much of an important part as actually doing the work in the first place rather than spending three three weeks four weeks six months working on actually you know delivering what we think is a, a really nice looking really engaging you know digital campaign you know make sure that we are examining and, and, and pulling apart that campaign at every step to make sure that actually it is doing what we want it to 
Um, obviously, with all of that in mind, you know, try to also kind of get you guys mindful of the fact that ultimately there is no kind of silver bullet or one size fits all approach that is going to work for for absolutely everybody. You know, I mean, the, the, just the three people that we're kind of sat around the table with today. You know, you guys have all got very different audiences for the work that you are doing. You will all have, you know, very different um, approaches in terms of the work that you, you want to deliver and and you know how you might actually kind of approach that. So. So, you know, what might work for, for one, even within the same sector, doesn't always potentially work, you know, for another business. So we always say to people, it's really important that, you know, rather than just go, you know, if, if, for, for the, to put myself as, as the example, rather than me going, okay, well, I want to, you know, put myself across in the same way as, I don't know, a big agency like Bright Design over in Milton Mauser, you know, how do I go about emulating what they do digitally? Actually, their strategy is going to be, you know, completely different for, you know, what they need as a business and, and what they can actually deliver um, to what I can, you know. So ultimately, it's really important that you guys within your specific niches and, and little areas that you're working within put together plans that are specific for you and your business and your audience, because ultimately, you know, what someone else is doing two, three miles down the road isn't really potentially going to do exactly the same job for you. So like I say, make sure that what we're doing, if we kind of examine every kind of bit of data available to us and really kind of think about the the steps and the questions that we've kind of talked about and outlined all the way through the last kind of eight weeks worth of, of kind of webinars then we think that you guys have got hopefully all of the kind of the skills and knowledge that you need to put together you know like i say a really kind of effective digital marketing plan um in terms of our kind of predictions then for 2020, we've got kind of a few uh, bits, things that we've noticed and things that we, uh, honestly, we've put our mystic Meg robes on a little bit to some degree. I'm always hesitant to make these kind of uh, kind of predictions and trends because you can guarantee there'll always be someone in December that comes back and goes, now, Ben, you told me. Um, but, so that's always interesting. But um, I thought it would be quite a useful thing for us to, to kind of think about and to, to perhaps round off this, uh, this series of sessions with. Um, so number one, uh, it, it's kind of a mix of, of digital marketing and honestly real world um, kind of experience as well. Uh, we genuinely believe that brands and businesses that are mindful of customer experience um, and present a real authentic empathetic voice um, are going to continue to see much higher engagement from the digital marketing activity over the, the coming weeks and the months to come. Um, you know, we talked about this in, in terms of, uh, you know, COVID-19 last week. Um, and, you know, obviously this week with everything that's going on as well, there is, you know, it's a real interesting time for brands and businesses trying to navigate that on social media and try and work out how can we kind of contribute to a, you know, a meaningful discourse versus actually are we being really inappropriate here and just trying to chuck our kind of sales messaging into, you know, what is, uh, you know, a, a, an interesting time online in, in one way or another. So, you know, we say to people that ultimately it's really important where you can to try Try and be real and authentic in what you're kind of saying and putting out there into the world. Um, obviously, you know anything too controversial or divisive is probably something to be avoided. You know, we used the example a couple of weeks ago of the you know the schools closing as being one particular inst uh, one particular example of you know, a really divisive issue that people are kind of coming down one way or the other on, and ultimately that's rooted in quite an emotional place. So as as businesses and brands trying to you know potentially interject ourselves into the, the kind of the wider discourse, then those kind of uh, areas and issues are are maybe not the kind of the ones to jump onto. But ultimately, you know, we we've, we've talked about uh, we talked quite extensively during our COVID session last week about the fact that ultimately, you know, businesses um, have, have enjoyed the relationships that they've had with their consumers for many years, you know, based on uh, ultimately taking the money and, and you know, engaging them as, as kind of brand ambassadors out there in the world. But ultimately, we're seeing, you know, both with our kind of clients and with, with other companies out there in the world that we're kind of paying attention to that companies who are there for their users and are actually providing some kind of a real, you know, human kind of interaction and engagement with people are the ones that are really kind of doing well out of social media at the moment and actually seeing some kind of benefit to that activity you know I mean at best um, if, you, if you follow this approach of just continuing to you know pretend nothing's wrong and everything's business as normal I feel like at best um, it's kind of a bit tone deaf and you're going to end up just kind of getting lost in the mix 
at worst, I think it almost is a bit of a lightning rod to attract kind of controversy and uh, negative attention kind of coming in people's direction as well, you know. So we're saying to people, yeah, be real, be empathetic, be authentic. And we, th we think, that, you know, businesses that, you know, adopt that mindset and put their users first um, and their user experiences first uh, are going to be the ones that, you know, over time are going to continue to, to enjoy the more you know, meaningful, engaged relationships with the consumers they're trying to reach. Um, number two, uh, external cultural factors in the real world are going to make, uh, we believe, local aspects of, of SEO and digital marketing ever more important than ever before. Um, we talked in our kind of SEO session a few weeks ago about the fact that, you know, there are innumerable hundreds of pieces of, of data and stuff that, that Google and, and other search engines use to, you know, determine search engine results and, and to order those results in terms of priority. But over the last kind of two or three years in particular, um, the, the location based part of that equation has become increasingly more important. Um, you know, it, it stands to reason, you know, Google assumes that if you are looking for a particular business or a service, that actually a guy two miles down the road is probably going to be far more benefit and use to you than, you know, some guy sat up in Dundee that maybe offers a, a similar kind of service. So with that in mind, obviously doing absolutely everything that you guys can as business owners um, and, and marketeers and out there to, to try and stack that deck in your favor and again just try and flag up as many of those kind of location based um, flags as you can so when you're pushing stuff out obviously on social media be sure that you are using things like your location tagging um, obviously Instagram Twitter Facebook all offers you the option to kind of check in or tag locations when you're posting kind of content out there um, we're finding within social platforms again um, location is increasingly um, one of the, the kind of the key ways that people are, are searching for particular content you know just as much as hashtags and that are really important for people finding you then again people are looking in in a specific geography for for content around um, you know particular conversations or businesses that they're looking for as well so again if you're not adding those location tags to your updates then you are potentially missing out um, obviously it goes without saying we talked about kind of keywords and specifically long tail keywords and things like that over um, a couple of sessions right back in the in the beginning um, and obviously making sure that those um, um, keyword strings and our, our keywords are well represented in our things like our website copy our blog posts um, not only you know in in the actual kind of paragraph texts um, and the actual words of what you're writing but in all of those kind of little hidden ways that we talked about as well so in your image titles your image alternative text um, making sure that keywords are, are presented in things like your page title and you know subheadings and things like that are all going to be you know really important parts of the puzzle in terms of helping uh, Google to determine oh this is someone in Northampton this is someone in Corby therefore it's going to be more you know relevant to people in those areas um, obviously we talked about things like reciprocal links a few weeks back and uh, you know the value that they can add from an SEO perspective obviously you know in terms of your your general kind of trust and authority score with Google then you know businesses within your own kind of sector uh, are always going to be really useful and especially businesses with perhaps a higher more established profile than you with with Google again it's kind of a reflected glory situation you know if a site with a really great SEO ranking starts linking to a site with perhaps a lesser SEO ranking, then some of the, the kind of the reflected uh, glory of that greater site will transfer and it will help to improve the ranking of that smaller site. So um, to amplify that even further, you know, if you can find, you know, relevant uh, authoritative websites within the local area that again can help you with, you know, inbound links to your website, then again, that will help to, to not only, you know, boost your, your general SEO profile, but again, will help to massively um, kind of tip the scales a little bit in your favor um, when, it terms, when it comes to, you know, looking at that location part of the equation as well. Um, to that end, obviously, Obviously, um, another one of the things, and it's a silly thing actually, that, that Google does uh, check on a local basis to make sure everything matches up, is something called the NAP citations of websites. Um, and NAP citations refers to name, address, and phone number. Um, and what Google does is it goes down uh, a whole long list of particular sources, things like Companies House, uh, Yelp, TripAdvisor, um, Thompson Local, bunch of, a whole different bunch of kind of listings and information services, and checks. Um, um, that your phone number, website, uh, phone number, name, and address 
all match and are uniform in all of those places. Um, so silly things like making sure your information is up to date in all of those kind of um, external platforms, making sure that your link is in place from all of those external platforms, again, will all help to, um, like I said, give you an extra little tick in that location box. Um, and, and finally, the, the other two at the bottom of that list, which are two I think I've mentioned a couple of times over the kind of previous weeks, but um, claiming your Google My Business listing is obviously a really important one. Um, and making sure that you've, you've got claimed and set up your Google Map pin as well. Because um, obviously we are seeing increasing amounts of search happening within Google Maps itself rather than within um, you know, the main kind of Google search console as well. So you know, while it's great to make sure obviously we've got great looking websites um, and you know, social feeds and, and all that kind of stuff in place, then you know, again, when it comes to meeting the users where they are, then you know, if increasing numbers of users are using Google Maps as a way of finding new businesses and, and stuff that's in their local area, then yeah, absolutely, it's a no brainer to make sure that you are kind of registered for that and in the mix as well well so number three th th those same external factors um, that we've talked about in terms of you know potentially keeping people you know, indoors under you know additional lockdowns later in the year or you know if people have to go into kind of 14 day kind of isolation and things like that ultimately a that is gonna you know drive a demand for more kind of localized goods and services but for us as, as business owners and as marketeers as well actually what it is helping to us to do is to make people adopt more tech-based solutions so whereas over in in the past you know it might be far easier for you know joe blow on the wellingborough road to just pop down the road and pick up the bits of stuff he needs from the shops and stuff on a real level that isn't possible you know at the moment and so as a result businesses are having uh, consumers are, are having to kind of adopt and make use of you know perhaps slightly more involved uh, kind of online tools than they maybe were before you know so you know we've noticed that across a couple of our client sites that actually online chat has been on the increase over the previous few weeks and months as people have become you know more accustomed to making use of things like live chat um, as people could become more accustomed to using all automated chatbots and not even you know talking to robots but you know are becoming more and more kind of happy and comfortable dealing with AI led kind of machine uh, chatbots as well um, we've noticed you know a lot more people starting to become more kind of visible and interacting with brands more on social media in a couple of areas specifically within um, uh, some of our travel and tourism clients for instance we're noticing that you know while you know the, the um, you know offices and visitor centers are closed and people can't get through on the phone or just drop in to go and see them that actually as a result you know increasing numbers of their consumers are actually getting in touch via, via things like Facebook and Twitter and stuff for the first time and actually starting to make a little bit more of a concerted move to be active in those areas as well um, you know even down to, to things like yourself Seb offering you know video consultations and stuff like that that maybe users maybe would have been hesitant at getting involved with a couple of years ago you know um, so with that in mind you know we, we actually think it's a really exciting time you know from that perspective to be able to actually start to make use of potentially some more uh, slightly involved slightly more kind of techy outward facing solutions without the risk of alienating our user base too much you know i think there's there's sometimes a danger that if we make things almost too technological and too whizzy that it, it, it kind of puts people off and they don't really want to kind of engage in that process too much but actually we're finding increasingly you know that people are becoming far more used to and um, uh, accustomed to you know interacting and using those technologies as part of their overall kind of research and buying kind of process and stuff you know so with that in mind we think there's going to be far more of that kind of technology kind of hitting websites and stuff over the next kind of six 12 months as businesses start to realize that actually um you know the 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 the, the, the sorry, the technological uh, sophistication of our user base and their kind of expectations and experience has grown significantly over the past 12 months. And so as a result, we can maybe start to look at, you know, working in a slightly more um, kind of advanced or slightly different way uh, to, to be able to meet them on that next step. Um, 
Number four, uh, uh, with less uh, real world distraction, we think uh, you know, audiences are gonna have more time and appetite to consume slightly longer forms of content online as well. Um, you know, we talked uh, basically every week about how much time we're all spending on you know, phones and iPads and devices and stuff at the moment. And what we're finding working with people and looking through analytics and stuff at the moment is that you know, while over the last few years, everything's been geared around you know, compressing our marketing activity down as much as possible it needs to be a six second video for for vine it needs to be 140 characters it needs to be you know a six second video on our instagram stories because you know the demand has been for this very easy to consume snackable kind of quick pieces of content actually what we found over the past um kind of couple of months is that actually the longer form pieces of content that we've been kind of pushing out into the world with people have actually been getting much more kind of engagement of interest than they have been before so we're finding you know clients uh, seeing significant increases in their blog section on their website for instance where users have got the time to be able to sit and spend you know 15 20 minutes at a time potentially consuming you know a number of different blog posts all in one go we've noticed across the board actually that you know time spent on site and pages uh, per visit for, uh, across a number of different uh, web clients of ours have all gone up in the period that um, you know everything's been kind of locked down for the last two months because people have literally got the time to sit and kind of explore that so with that in mind we think you know ultimately while it's important to still provide some some of that kind of snacky you know easy to consume content and that does play an important part of that mix um, you know we genuinely believe over the next kind of few months that there is going to be increasing kind of appetite and demand out there for some of this slightly longer slightly more involved kind of content that you guys can potentially be pushing out there so whether that be you know a strategy of, of your weekly or bi-weekly blog posts that you know 300 to 600 words that go out there maybe it's a, a case of developing you know kind of slightly longer explainer videos or even you know things like podcasts that are you know potentially you know a single question and answer out you know stretched out to, to 45 minutes to an hour as you get the chance to really sit and kind of discuss uh, a particular topic and put that out there you know so we, we, we genuinely think that if you've got the time at this point in time to be able to sit and start thinking about some of that you know slightly more involved content as well as your you know your, your general easy to consume stuff that actually that's going to be a really Really important avenue for you guys over the coming kind of period of time to come both in terms of you know informing uh, people about what you do but also you know kind of marking out your your reputation in, in your particular sectors and fields as being you know an authoritative voice you know a good uh, kind of reputation and someone that knows what they're talking about all of these you know slightly longer form styles of content whether that be you know videos blog posts stuff like that they're all a great part of that mix to enable you to really kind of get down explain a particular you know problem or solution and you know provide some something of some real kind of value and interest to people as well Number five, uh, more and more brands we think are probably going to start trying to develop uh, more interactive content for consumers. Um, you know, I think ultimately we are starting to kind of hit peak landing page at the moment in terms of people getting a little bit bored of just filling in a, you know, a contact form on a landing page and uh, and getting an email through at the end of it. Um, you know, we've talked about over the last few weeks how, how things like video and images and stuff are still, you know, really engaging for people and and you know help us to. Uh, ultimately you know get a like get a share maybe get some clicks through to our, our website and stuff like that but ultimately as as marketeers there's only a certain amount that we can gain from that you know we can see from our engagement rates for instance how much you know potentially people like particular styles of content or you know something that we're putting out there into the world but in terms of what we can actually learn about our audience um, and and what we can actually you know uh, demonstrate and show to our audience as well there are limits to what things aren't you know images and videos videos will be able to deliver for us so you know with that in mind we're saying to you know consumer to customers in a few different areas at the moment you know to start thinking about different ways that we can you know deliver um, interesting slightly more uh, interactive content for people but also you know content that potentially helps us to learn you know a little bit more about our users and their their interests and stuff as well you know um, and some kind of examples of bits that we are actively talking proposals through with people at the minute you know include things 
like quizzes and polls, which are quite useful ways, again, of, of learning about our audience and, and finding out bits about their kind of preferences. Um, and in terms of kind of content and stuff that we kind of want to push out there into the world, then, you know, we're finding things like augmented reality ads, are things that people are getting really excited about at the moment and asking us to uh, kind of have a conversation to see how they could be kind of implemented into their kind of business mix. Um, things like 360 degree videos is something that over the last kind of couple of years, again, within kind of the travel and tourism field, for instance, has become kind of really important and we think will become you know even more so over the coming weeks and months when people are you know potentially not able to you know be visiting places like museums you know for the sake of argument then you know things like 360 videos uh, you know guided tours things like that will become you know increasingly important and really useful for people to be able to kind of translate those experiences and deliver them for people um, and even things like kind of flash games and stuff like that we talked about last week um, an app called Fastery uh, which develops really useful kind of fun landing page experiences for people as kind of a, a bit of a buffer between, you know, um, social media and your website. Um, and things like that can be a really useful way of, of kind of engaging with people and, and giving people, you know, something to do, something that kind of reinforces our brand and, and gets people thinking about us a little bit, but maybe in a way that's slightly more engaging than just, you know, here's what we do, fill in this form to get a little bit more information as well, you know. Um, sorry, Shalene, I noticed you were raising your pen there, very politely. Um, I just, yeah, I just wanted to know uh, what uh, augmented um, reality ads were, and also regarding the 360 video, is that just, for example, uh, let's say a venue flip out at Russian Lakes, would it just be like a 360 of the location, or... I, you know, I'm not quite sure. I've, I've seen I've seen talking. various um, kind of ways that people do it. You know, some people I've seen offer kind of virtual tours, and it's a case of you know replicating a particular experience out there in the world. Um, I've I've also seen um, some people who will literally use kind of things like 360 video as a way of. Um, kind of digitally recreating a particular space, you know, that people can then go and kind of explore, find their way around. And it's less of a, um, uh, less of a, a perhaps an, of an interactive experience than say having a, a tour guide or someone that might kind of follow them around. But it's, it's something that, yeah, would, would kind of potentially, like I say, recreate a, a space or an area that you could um, look at. So, I mean, um, you know, to put it into a, a fashion point of view, it, may, it might be a, a, a boutique, for instance, could look at maybe some kind of a 360 video as a way of um, showcasing a whole bunch of particular ranges you know in there if it was set up in such a way that actually the the, the video that was delivered at the end was something that I as a user could walk around that particular boutique, you know, and explore what's here and what's there and, and have a little look around it and stuff as well. I mean, as we say, there is honestly no kind of hard and fast rule for, for kind of how some of these kind of technologies can be applied. And some of them will be very kind of specific to you know the, the sector that is looking at it. Um, but yeah, we, we genuinely think that, you know, providing some of those extra kind of interactive experiences for people where it's appropriate and where it's kind of um, in keeping with, with the messaging that you're putting out there and stuff into the world will be, you know, really useful in terms and really important in terms of providing, you know, all of that kind of really engaging, valuable, interesting content to people. <clears throat> so uh, finally, number six, um, as consumers become accustomed to personalized experiences online, um, personalization is going to be crucial to ensuring the success of our email marketing activity as well as we've talked about. It was one thing uh, that we've mentioned a few times and I didn't want to kind of leave today without us making mention of email marketing because again it's one that over the previous kind of two months as people have spent you know more time sat at home sat online that uh, we've actually noticed emails proving to be an increasingly important part of that kind of ongoing um, discussion with people really you know obviously social media is a great place to be and it's something that if you can get the right messaging and the right kind of content together for it as i say it's somewhere that i think you guys can see real benefit at the moment in terms of the amount of time people are spending on there that being said there is you know a massive amount of noise on kind of social media um in general at the moment you know you turn it on and the first thing you see is the covid19 updates and then within two seconds you know it's fairly abundantly obvious you know there's a whole bunch of stuff kind of going on in the world 
that people will quite naturally be distracted by and gravitate towards, you know, because it's important that people are, are finding this stuff out and actually, you know, taking the time to do so. So rather than get lost in that mix, we found that email marketing's actually been a really useful way of kind of bridging the gap, you know, because it's a format that people can consume in their own time and will take the time to kind of read open explore and act on um you know maybe at different times of the day for sure we're noticing at the moment our email timings have, have gone all over the place with the kind of times that we're seeing people opening stuff but in terms of making sure that actually your messaging doesn't get kind of lost in the wider mix um and actually still resonates with people actually we think email is going to be continue to be a, you know a really important part of that for you guys um at the top i put a couple of stats that i thought were quite uh, instructive in this field we found that um, I think this was 2018 this particular survey that we found but at that point 63% of consumers that were surveyed said they were quote annoyed by bulk emails that went out to them and I know I, I get really pissed off on a weekly basis of this stuff coming through to me sometimes that I've even forgotten that I've signed up for at various times but then you just get these kind of blank generic things that come through that do very little to actually kind of generate a huge amount of interest for businesses and stuff as well conversely 80% of people said they were more likely to do business with a brand that offered you know a more personalized experience to users and stuff as well so you know without you know saying to you guys oh there's all kinds of amazing you know ai that you can go and buy and set up and stuff to uh, to start making use of that and offer those kind of personalized experiences there are plenty of simple ways that you can start to try and you know hopefully offer slightly more targeted email stuff right from the the very get-go you know even with kind of a simple setup something like mailchimp um taking options on sign-up forms will be one really simple way that you can start to get a feel for the kind of different interests and topics and stuff that your users are maybe going to be interested in moving forward um, obviously make sure that when you are putting together uh, your email blasts to go out to people that you have a look at what's gone out in the past previously you know what kind of users respond to what kind of content uh, in the past will be a really good indicator of, of what goes on in the future um, my wife's a big dr phil fan and one of dr phil's uh, truisms is that the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior uh, and so you know that that kind of fits in the digital marketing field as well you know if people are you know consistently looking at um, you know one particular area of your website or your business offering their interests probably aren't going to change or evolve that dramatically moving forward so if you can kind of lean into that and start to get a feel for you know which links which bits of content within your you know not just a specific email but you know your wider email marketing in kind of history um, if you can use that to start to shape the content that you deliver to people in kind of real time and mean that of the three articles that you deliver through to them on a weekly basis you know they're going to be interested in all three rather than or maybe one and you know if they click the other two it's a bonus then actually you'll start to find over time um, that users become accustomed to that email being useful to them being of interest to them and so over time we find you know when businesses start to implement a more kind of targeted approach uh, you know sometimes you'll find a slight drop off as, as the, the the kind of the whole nature of that email list starts to shift a little bit and it prompts some people to unsubscribe and maybe kind of walk away but over time what we do find is that curve kind of ticks upwards and that actually by sticking to that strategy and making sure the stuff that you are delivering through on a kind of a weekly or monthly basis if it's as targeted and as relevant as is humanly possible that ultimately you know those those open rates the click-through rates as a result you know go up dramatically over time so trying to like i say make sure these are kind of personalized experiences rather than a bulk copy and paste exercise um, is definitely going to be the key over the next kind of six months to making the most of, of what is a really interesting opportunity with email and stuff you know as i say over the last kind of five five to ten years i think it's one that has become uh, gradually kind of less uh, less and less important as people have started switching um, and becoming more accustomed to, to you know consuming and, and engaging with people in, in kind of a social media environment as I say at the moment it, it's quite difficult in some cases for businesses to do that because there's just so much happening that, uh, that people want to talk about that isn't business um, and so as a result you know if you've got the opportunity to talk to someone in their own time away from that kind of crazy bubble of everything that's going on every time you open twitter then you know it, it'd be a shame not to make the most of that and to not take you know maximum benefit from it so 
with that in mind, our kind of general advice that we kind of hoped uh, everyone would try and kind of take away our, our kind of uh, most important points. Um, if you can, and if, if you know it, where we're one person businesses, obviously it's going to be impossible to do so. But, you know, it, people that are, are working within, you know, wider networks, bigger organizations, we like to say involve as many people as you can from that organization when you know, considering what should go into your digital strategy. Um, everyone will have their own kind of experience and, and thoughts on it. And, you know, ultimately, as, as kind of point two alludes to, you know, everybody will work within a different part of that business, potentially, all of which have got different touch points with consumers at different areas of the, um, the digital kind of funnel that we talked about, you know, your, your frontline customer service people might be dealing with very different questions than, you know, your after sales or, or the, you know, workshop team for, for, for the sake of argument. So making sure that actually you take into account that really kind of diverse set of touch points and experiences that people have with you will be really important. Um, most probably most important for me actually make sure that the planning that you do is, is kind of detailed put out in advance and that ideally you stick to that schedule as much as possible because the minute you start kind of slipping and it, uh, you know one day leads into you know blog post didn't go out till the middle of the week this week so our email campaign can't go out till friday which means the next one the next week gets delayed and you know without having a, a very strict and, and kind of targeted timeline in play it can be you know quite difficult sometimes to keep everything on the rails and to see the most kind of benefit from it so plan everything that you do in detail schedule it up as much as you can and try and stick to that every step of the way um, you know put together a strategy that is omni-channel if you can we say to people it's absolutely understandable to focus all of your areas in one particular um, bit that works for you you know if you've got a really engaged Facebook page it makes sense to you know concentrate a lot of um, uh, time and effort into that area but ultimately you know that does neglect potentially a, a whole bunch of other audiences that are out there on you know maybe Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or something as well you know so when you're putting together the, the, the plans that you guys want to execute make sure you do take into account you know that there are multiple kind of channels and platforms that people are operating on and hoping you are going to be operating on as well you know so utilizing the, the tools and the, the skills that we've given you guys over the previous you know couple of weeks hopefully you can start to to put that together and work across all of those different channels um, again where possible uh, lighten the load uh, we've talked about the fact that from a practical point of view obviously empowering other people within your businesses and organizations to take up um, you know, particular elements of this digital marketing plan will will help to lighten the load and make it a little bit easier for you. But again, more than anything, you know, I think uh, businesses that uh, empower their staff to be a part of the the conversation and to maybe act as you know digital cheerleaders and ambassadors, whether that be on LinkedIn or you know Twitter on their personal accounts and stuff like that, then actually that can you know not only help to to make it easier for you to deliver that work as businesses, but also gives consumers a, a different potentially um, set of voices and people that they can draw on and stuff as well and ultimately I, I think I mentioned to you my, my client space fact that I worked with a few weeks ago um, they're, they're very very engaged on a personal level on LinkedIn um, and so we find as well as engaging with their consumers and audience through the company pages there that actually just as big a part of that puzzle is you know the individual team members working with you know again individual customers and, and companies and stuff that approach them for specific bits of kind of feedback and information regarding their particular part of the business as well and stuff you know so it can really help to, to kind of develop and expand you know not just the the the, 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 the scope of what you're saying but um, you know the, the tone and, and the, the different kind of personalities of the people within your kind of business as well you know um, right at the top of this list, obviously we say as well, I think we've kind of hopefully given you uh, this kind of mindset over the last few weeks, but don't be afraid to experiment, you know. I think a lot of people are, are sometimes hesitant to, to get involved with trying something new because, you know, maybe it's a, a fear of it becoming a bit of a time drain or they're worried that they haven't got, you know, the, the necessary kind of technical skills. 
everything that we've talked about over the past kind of few weeks is stuff that is specifically designed really to be as easy to access for you guys as possible and stuff that you can ultimately get to work with within you know 10 15 minutes in, in some cases you know um so we, we say to people you know there's nothing that can't be deleted there's nothing that can't be undone and there's there's nothing you're going to do particularly you know that damaging that can be you know um done from just trying to experiment with things so you know if you think uh, something might be of, of use to your business you know like with, with the, the live chat with you Charlene that you mentioned a few weeks ago you know something that you thought could work and, and have put to use um, and have you know seen some benefit from it so don't be afraid to kind of experiment and jump into things if you think it's going to offer you know some value and some benefit both to you and to your potential users as well um, gain as much understanding of your audience as you can um, as I said to you I, I can't kind of overstate how important that is in terms of shaping the work that you do is to make sure that you've got a really kind of keen understanding of, of what it is that you are doing and what it is you're trying to achieve with the work um, and we said kind of right at the bottom you know be sure to think of your kind of digital marketing activity as a work in progress um, you know I don't think anybody would say you know right off uh, get to the end of a campaign and go well that was 100% amazing nothing could have gone better with that I'm going to repeat the whole campaign over again immediately um, this is something that will will necessary will be it will be necessary for your plan to adapt refine um, and, and potentially change shape over you know especially a much longer period of time if your digital marketing plan is a 12 month campaign then you know anything from you know the, the kind of the cultural factors to you know the technology that people are working with can change quite dramatically over kind of a six 12 month period as well so be very kind of mindful of the fact that as you go along Long. Um, you know it, hopefully you'll be kind of learning and, and keeping an eye on things like your, your analytics your dashboards and stuff as you go along to to keep a keen kind of eye on actually what is happening and, and how effective some of that is and like I say use that as a constant roadmap really to, to refine to tweak adapt and, and hopefully improve the work that you're doing at every step of the process so that you know ultimately by the end of it if, if you've done so then you know while it might have been a success in month one hopefully your campaign will be even even more successful by month six because you will have learned at every kind of available juncture actually how could we be doing better and taking the steps necessary to, to, to kind of make those incremental changes and improvements as you go along. Um, ultimately as well the last one is, is kind of a slightly more kind of ephemeral uh, fluffy nice one but um, we're saying to people at the moment you know it's a really unique time to be able to actually um, kind of put some time into some of these areas for the first time you know we, we, I'm, I'm exactly the same I'm always working on clients projects and then I've got to do my bloody accounts and do this and do that and you know my own kind of uh, plans and, and uh, kind of learning is something that I don't kind of often get as, as much time as I'd like to prioritize and you know at the moment I'm getting a little bit more time to be able to do exactly that you know so we're saying to everyone if, if you've got the opportunity to do the same to learn a new skill to put something to use and to even if it's just actually that new thing is planning and you know that's something that you've never had the time and the luxury to be able to do before you know then now is really a, a unique opportunity to try and you know put all of those kind of bits of the puzzle together and actually hopefully emerge from all of this with a slightly more kind of clearer um, kind of more defined plan as to what kind of technology and, and digital marketing can do for you guys and, and your businesses over the coming kind of weeks and months um, with that in mind, uh, I'll throw it open to you guys at this point and, um, and see if there is anything kind of specific or anything um, slightly more generally that you wanted to ask about either, you know, today's session or, or kind of any of the, the other sessions or, or anything that we've kind of covered over the previous weeks. Maybe just, uh, Ben, just popped into my head. Is it, is it mindful to think that whereas we may be saying like here's my 12 month plan because we're in such uncertain times it's like we should shorten that down and say hang on a minute while we're in this you know this moment in time which let's be honest even if it stays at the the same now it's probably going to be a strange world for six months to come maybe we should have a, a shorter plan and say right let's have a plan for for today and how how we're operating and let's just say 2021 it's it's you know 2019 again everything's back to how it was 
let's yeah. start a fresh plan. Is it, is it useful to have two? Maybe? I, I think yeah. that makes a lot of sense, yeah. I mean, there's that old adage, isn't there, of, you know, um, hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. And I think that probably is, is kind of about the most appropriate advice I can give you in this particular instance as well, actually. I think six months takes us through to what, Christmas? And I feel like that's quite naturally going to be uh, quite an organic kind of uh, point that you can potentially work towards. But um, in reality, as you say, it's really difficult to be able to second guess exactly what things are going to look like even two months from now. You know, I know kind of middle of February, um, I was packing my case ready for a trip to the States and I knew exactly what the next two months were going to look like, you know, and then kind of come April, I'm hunkered down in the bunker, uh, as you say, trying to teach GCSE maths. So you never know quite what's going to come down the pipe afterwards. But yeah, I think definitely have, a, have some kind of a plan, even if it is, as you say, a month, two months for now. And you may be tackling it in terms of, a OK, well, you know, as people are transitioning back to some kind of normality now for the next six weeks, you know, how am I going to change that now versus you know, it might be, again, completely different by Christmas when everything is kind of back to you know, some kind of singing and dancing normality. So, yeah, like I say, I think maybe having a slightly more manageable timeline to start with would be useful. But as you say, certainly being aware that there is every chance all of that wonderful planning might need some fairly drastic retooling um, kind of right from the off. And yeah, if you've got that kind of in, in your mind and you've got almost a, a fallback position or fallback kind of strategy that you can um, look to move to and adapt to, then yeah, I think that'll certainly um, uh, stand you in good stead. Uh, I think we, we said, didn't we, during the, the COVID session last week, you know, the, the businesses that were prepared and the businesses that were, you know, kind of able to pivot uh, and, and do things slightly differently have ultimately been the ones that have really been able to thrive this last couple of months. And I think that will continue to be the case over the next kind of certainly the next six months through to Christmas at the very least, you know, the ones that are adaptable and have got plans and contingencies in place, you know, uh, will be the ones that are ultimately best placed to be able to deal with any of those external changes. Uh, Brilliant. I, Thank you. I do have a, a few questions, Ben, but I think I'll email them over to you if that's OK. Just yeah, sure. No worries. Just because I think it may be a little bit time consuming and quite specific. So um, probably not fair on everybody else, but uh, yeah. Well, drop me an email over, Charlene, and perhaps yeah. if, I, um, if I ever think about them over the weekend, and perhaps give you a call Monday and we can have a chat over a coffee if that's all right. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds great. That works for you. Yeah, that sounds excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you so much through. for these sessions. I've really enjoyed them. I know I've not been on every single one, but they've been so helpful. And also the um, slides that you make available after the session. So even if you've missed something or, you know, or you've only been part way through, whatever it may be, at least it's there. And it's just good to have, so you can always refer back to it at a later date if you're not sure if you're on track of what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah, well, that's it's been great. brilliant. Oh, well, thank you very much. I genuinely really appreciate that. That's really yeah. kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I echo that, Ben, that you've been really helpful to me. And I, I take notes on every session on things that I think, right, let's act on it. But I do download yeah. the slides to say, me look, <laughs> there's so much information there that I know it'll be useful. So when I've done, when I've explored this avenue, what else, you know, you forget what you mentioned. So click back on the slide and you immediately yeah. remember it again. Sure. 100%. Oh, that's awesome. Is there a potential sort of, you know, maybe post COVID, fingers crossed when this all goes you know perhaps next year sometime that there'll be another sort of webinar series like this addressing new and yeah absolutely absolutely and i mean actually the um where was it yeah here we go next slide here we we are actively working with karen at east north ants at the moment to develop a, a kind of what comes next actually um now slightly kind of more longer term there will be another set of these kind of digital webinars because there's something that me and karen try and do fairly regularly actually to try and keep people updated um so yeah there will absolutely be some more of these kind of how to kind of webinar bits happening over the, the kind of exactly what the timeline will be i'm not sure but we are talking about those at the moment but we are also rolling out a whole kind of content piece through june and july we actually kind of agreed it this week um and they're going to be slightly more kind of issue focused um series where I'm, i'll be honest with you i'm doing less of the kind of the instructional and more of the the pulling the content stuff together for those guys over the pre over the next kind of few weeks and months but that's going to be um far more kind of uh, quality kind of information process um literally kind of helping businesses through 
all of the maybe not even marketing related stuff but all of the issues that they're up against at the moment all the questions that they want answering all of the help that they need to you know reopen readjust kind of bring in all kinds of different things over the next few months so there is going to be a whole load more kind of business support resources and assets coming out via um the nen valley uh, website and stuff over kind of June, July and into August. I think we're looking at our timeline at the moment. Um, so there'll be some more bits coming there. There are some more um, webinars, hopefully uh, towards the end of the summer, I think we'll try and do a few bits there as well. Um, and then at the same time, obviously as well, we've got the, um, we do our little So Very Creative podcast as well, Worldwide What that we've started. Charlene, you were on there a few weeks ago, weren't you? Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll be kind of continuing that. Uh, on a weekly basis as well um, uh, to try and again just try and help push a little bit more kind of knowledge expertise out into the world as well um, what we do with that is we talk to Northamptonshire businesses find out a bit about kind of what they're up to how they work um, and, and kind of how they're specifically using kind of software technology social media stuff like that to try and kind of connect with people and, and do the work that they're doing so we're going to be continuing that for the next few kind of months as well to try and again keep a fresh flow of new ideas and and you know uh, new voices coming through so that you guys have got things to to investigate and to hopefully kind of go off and, and try and implement into your own kind of businesses and stuff as well so yeah you're more than welcome to uh, to, to check that out and uh, indeed you're more than welcome to come and have a chat with me for that podcast at some point and to be a part of that as well um but yeah otherwise like i say there are uh, there's a few kind blogs and resources that i've put the links up to here um through the last few weeks these are all ones that on a you know, kind of a day-to-day -day basis are honestly teaching me new stuff as well you know i think um anyone that tells you they know absolutely everything about digital marketing or social media is lying through their teeth because they nobody knows exactly everything that's going on at any one moment because it's honestly frequently changing so much um so yeah we, we find all of these um kind of five six resources here super useful on a day-to-day -day basis um in terms of being a, yeah, a really good source of new information new products and uh, new ways of thinking about things as well so yeah over the the kind of the coming weeks and months yeah there'll be a whole range of different bits kind of coming out in different ways and, and in different channels as well so um yeah obviously keep in touch with us on kind of social media and stuff you can obviously there'll be all the updates coming from there um the nen valley account which is at underscore nen valley on twitter um river nen on facebook and nen valley on instagram i think as well um there'll be updates going out through those channels as well for when those kind of dates and, and bits of uh, information and content are available and stuff as well so yeah keep in touch um and we'll be sure to, to hopefully keep doing as much as we can to support you guys and you know like i say do everything we can to to, to get everyone to a slightly better place with this stuff and then like i say moving forward from there you guys have got all of my uh, contact details. Um, you are more than welcome to reach out anytime if there's anything I can do to help um, bounce ideas off. Uh, if, if it's just something that you've forgotten from one of our sessions and you want to have a quick chat through anything, then like I say, I'm, I'm genuinely here anytime. And as I think I've mentioned on a weekly basis, I'm a massive nerd. So I love talking about this stuff all day long. So um, yeah, please do reach out and get in touch in the short term. Um, you know, while we haven't got this kind of weekly session on Fridays for for a few weeks then you know i am still here and, and always more than happy to, to have a chat with you guys as well so please don't be a stranger please do uh, reach out and let me know if there is uh, anything we can help you with further at that point um and to that end actually just before i let you go um one of the things we are actively putting together with karen at the minute for that nen valley stuff um is, is trying to do a bit of fact finding with businesses in the area to try and find out what specific issues and stuff you guys are kind of up against and what kind of help and advice and guidance would be useful for us to throw into that mix when we are um kind of putting it all together over the next few months those videos those podcasts and stuff like that so um if you guys have got two minutes at some point over the next week when we've got a user survey available it'd be awesome if you wouldn't mind me just popping it over just to get a bit of feedback from you guys that Absolutely. again might just help us to uh, to inform that and be again as relevant to, to businesses as possible when we come out with it towards the end of june yeah definitely more than happy to contribute awesome 
Well, that'd be perfect. Well, in the meantime, slides for today are up on the website already. I'm going to um, transcode the video in a second, and that'll be going on to YouTube as well this afternoon. So let's say, make sure you are um, referring back to those if there's anything you um, that you need to in the meantime. Um, Charlene, I'll look forward to getting your email through. And like I say, we can have a chat uh, perhaps Monday when I've had a chance to, um, to think about your questions and come back to you with some undoubtedly excellent advice. Yeah, um, I'm sure. <laughs> and then, yeah, in the meantime, time as I say uh, I've really appreciated uh, all of you guys stopping by over the last few weeks it's been genuinely a real pleasure getting to know you a little bit and uh, it's really nice to know that we've been able to to help you guys a little bit and to to uh, to, to offer you guys something different so um, yeah it's been a real pleasure thank you uh, very much for being with us uh, over the last few weeks um, like I say really hoping to get to meet some of you guys in real life uh, in the near future hopefully without a hazmat suit as well hopefully <laughs> no thanks for everything Ben I look forward to meeting you in person in the future anyway an absolute yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Now, in the meantime, well, I really hope you guys all have a great afternoon over there and a great weekend. And um, yeah, like I say, as soon as we uh, have got some kind of firm dates and info on kind of what comes next and what else we'll be doing to, to try and help and, and push you guys along, we'll be back in touch if that's all right. Brilliant. Perfect. Nice to speak to you. Guys, Thanks, have a lovely man. afternoon. I'll see you Thank soon. You.